This video is a review of the particle in a ring chapter in the quantum chemistry and spectroscopy playlist. So we start with our particle in a ring model system where our potential energy is zero inside this fixed circular ring and infinity otherwise. So we have a fixed radius of capital R and we're fixed to be in the xy plane by our polar angle theta in spherical polar coordinates being set at 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians. This reduces our three-dimensional spherical polar wave function down to a one-dimensional wave function in the azimuthal angle phi in spherical polar coordinates. The energies of these systems can be determined by solving the Schrodinger equation, where our Hamiltonian is going to reduce to minus h bar squared over 2m uh, d squared d phi squared. And our energy levels then are going to depend on a quantum number n, which can be any integer, positive or negative, which is going to be equal to h bar squared n squared over 2mr squared. Notice that there's a slight difference there between the particle and a box uh, in that we can also have zero and negative integers for our, our constants, and uh, this is h bar instead of h. Uh, then our wave functions are going to be normalized as following. Uh, psi n of phi is 1 over the square root of 2 pi times the complex exponential e to the i n phi. We can use this model to look at the spectra of things like aromatic molecules such as benzene. So the wavelength of the pi to pi star transition we calculate in that video to be 8 pi squared m c r squared over 3 h mass of the electron, speed of light, uh, distance from the center, and Planck's constant, where we predict a value from the par simple particle in a ring model of 207 nanometers versus the experimental 255 nanometer transition, giving only a 20% error for a very uh, crude and simplistic model. The particle in a ring energy levels also explain the concepts of aromaticity and anti-aromaticity according to Huckel's rule, where 4n plus 2 electrons will fill up an entire shell or level of available energies, giving you an aromatic system, and having 4n will half fill up some shell and give you an anti-aromatic system. We see a double degeneracy in every state above the ground state where their energies are going to be the same because we have a square of this value here. And we can distinguish those two states by their uh, angular momentum around the z-axis where for those two degenerate states, one of them has a positive value going counterclockwise and one has a negative value rotating, counterclockwise, rotating clockwise as a complex plane with the eigenvalue h bar n. Links to each individual video in the on-screen annotations as well as in the description.